what is up money makers this video is a follow-up of a past video about my previous business venture with the flea market now this is one of many ventures I've had and I will go in depth in other videos about the other business ventures I've done but this is about flea markets and making money there which I definitely have experience in so I started the flea market at the end of ninth grade as in the summer following it and I was selling stuff and accessories cases, chargers, earbuds. If you can think of something that you saw if I needed, I probably sold it. And it was good. I made good money. Um, <clears throat> while at the flea market, I also sold everyday need, needed items. Batteries, trash bags, things you find at dollar stores, convenience stores, just the basic items people need. And they would all be out for sale. Um, with the flea market, I made thousands of dollars. Uh, one day that would be bad, one day you make a hundred, one day you lose a hundred, one day you make a thousand. And that's how it is. But advice wise, use the space you have. Frontal space. Frontal space. As in, when there's a space, let's say you get a 10 by 5 space at the flea market. That's pretty average. Often they are about 10 by 5. Or vice versa. Whatever. If you have 10 feet in front of you and 5 feet behind you, or five feet in front of you, ten feet behind you, doesn't matter. The amount of space behind you has no relevance at all. Don't use it. Set up your tables, set up your space so that you are using the entire frontal area. Cause think about it. If you're at a flea market, festival, anywhere where you're a street vendor, everyone that comes in that aisle has to walk past that aisle. They're walking past your booth. That's a customer, a potential. Not everyone is going to walk into your booth. It doesn't matter what you're selling. It's not interesting. They don't care. You have to attract their attention. They're the customer. You're trying to sell to them. So it really doesn't matter if you think your product's great or not. Use your space you have up front. Going in deep, waste of space, waste of money, waste of time. Um, so once you got that in your head and you use your frontal space, uh, set it up. Nice display means a lot. If you throw things around, make it look trashy, they will value it as trash and they will not buy it. Or you'll get lowballed, which you don't want. So have a nice display, use your frontal space, and make sure you have good prices. Now, good prices means what? A good price is a good price if, in comparison to what's around you, the price is low. So if you're the only one selling your product and there's demand for it, mark it up, make a lot of profit. But if you're selling something that has other vendors there selling the same product, match the price or go lower. Because there's no reason for someone to buy the same thing from you at a higher price if other people have it. So be smart. Don't buy something that you can't make money on. And don't sell something for so much you're not going to sell any. If you paid a dollar for something and market it up to 10 bucks a piece and sell three, that's $30, which would be 27 in profit if you paid a dollar each. Sounds good, but if you charge two dollars each, doubling your money, and just blow them out of that price, making a lot of money, sell a hundred pieces, that's a hundred bucks in profit. Now you made twenty-eight dollars less per piece. Sounds like a big difference, but you sold a hundred pieces, so you're still making more profit. So when you're figuring out your pricing, make sure it's a price that, when a large quantity is sold over the day, will equate to a nice 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 profit. Um, ask yourself an accessories. I sold silly bands and uh, loom bands which are basically uh, a kit in which children make their own bracelet and they were popular. It was popular for half a year and now it's just worth a worthless piece of rubber. You can buy them in Dollar Tree. But when they were hot a loom band kit was up for ten dollars and little baggies of rubber bands. That's all it was, a little bag of rubber bands. About the size you get in braces, if you guys are aware of that. There's little size rubber bands which you make braces from would sell three packets for five dollars. Just color red, color blue, whatever. The kids bought it. The kid said, Mom, Dad, let's buy this. And that's an impulse buy. An impulse buy is where your money comes from. You want people to look at it and want to buy it without thinking. Whether you're pitching it or it's a popular item or it looks cool. Sales for flea markets are impulse buys. That's where you make the money for flea markets. And of course for other things, it's not that way, which I'll get into details in other videos. But have a good product, 
or have a display or have an advertising method, something that makes people want to buy it on impulse, not on sound decision making. That's not that's not the goal. You want people to look at it and think, I need this. My kid wants it. They will shut them up. It's a good idea. It's fun. That's great. They want me to sleep. Whatever the reason is, give them a the reason to buy it on these spots. Um, I've been selling bamboo pillows now the past year. I don't really do flea markets anymore. I do festivals, fairs, carnivals, which I will talk about in a different video. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Jared Shapkoff, and my name and Instagram is in the description below. Follow me, like it up. Thank you for watching.